Therapeutics said it was looking to generate an antibody cocktail product that would act as a protective shield against COVID-19 and even remain effective if the virus mutates. Joining me now to discuss, Dr. John Campbell, an academic and nurse practitioner for 40 years, keeps his finger on all the latest coronavirus developments around the world, also the founder of Campbell Teaching Doctor, California company, announcing that an antibody it developed showed 100% inhibition, inhibition rather, of COVID-19 in preclinical studies. Uh, doctor, is this a cause for hope? Yes, indeed it is, because when someone gets infected with this COVID-19 disease, they get infected with the virus, and the virus is the antigen, and it's that viral antigen that stimulates the person's own body, the person's own immune system, to produce these antibodies, these immune proteins. Scientifically, they're called immunoglobulins, and it's those that actually eradicate the virus from the body. So in theory and in principle, if you could copy those antibodies and give them to someone who had the virus, those antibodies would just trot along and kindly eradicate the virus for you. This is what we call passive immunity. It's a bit like the immunity that a, a child gets from his mother or through breast milk. It's immunity that you enjoy, but you don't have to make it yourself. So it could work, but there are many practical difficulties ahead and it's not going to be straightforward. Now, the particular treatment they're working on is called monoclonal antibodies. And these me this means that all of the antibodies are produced by a clone cell. You've probably seen clones on science fiction movies where everyone's the same. And these cells are the same. They're all the same. So they should produce all of these antibodies that are the same, these monoclonal antibodies. And you then collect those up and you inject them. But there's lots of problems with that. Because these antibodies are such complicated proteins, we can't synthesize them in the lab. They can only be made by other living things. So they're made by tissue cultures, complicated tissue cultures. And typically, they're only made in fairly small amounts. And they can be very expensive as well. Now, if this company, I believe in, in uh, San Diego, has developed a way to do this at scale and cheaply, then it's a complete game changer. Yeah. But I'm not sure that is yet the case. I want to jump in real quick here. Herd immunity, um, something we hear a lot of w w when you when you need it, when you're fighting off other viruses. Um, but specifically, we don't have that here. Uh, we're not out and about, at least for the for the majority of us here. Um, is the lack of herd immunity a cause for concern, doctor? Absolutely, it is. Now, there's two sorts of immunity, really. There's the individual immunity that I will enjoy if I've been exposed to the virus or if I've been exposed to a vaccine. But then there's the community of the whole population. And that's what this herd immunity is. It's the, community, it's the immunity in the whole population. And this happens when people are exposed to the virus and many individuals in the population will make the antibody and therefore we believe to be immune, although there's still some debate about that. But I am expecting people who've had this infection, the majority of them to be immune for a year or 18 months, but we're open to further information on that. So be, people will develop herd immunity. And that means if I've got the virus and someone two doors down from me has not got the virus and I bump into the person next door to me who has got the virus, then I can't pass it on. It breaks that chain of transmission. The trouble is to get herd immunity, we probably need about 60 or 70 percent of people to be immune to the virus before we get that. Now, this new study is fascinating in Boston. It's just been announced by Mayor uh, Marty Walsh. And what they did was they uh, took blood from 750 people and they looked for the presence of the antibodies using quite sophisticated laboratory techniques. And what they actually found out was that a relatively small proportion, I think it was only 9.9 percent .9 of people, actually had immunity to the virus. So in other words, that means that 90 percent of people did not have immunity to the virus. So if we've got 10 percent of people who are immune to the virus at the moment and we need 60 to 70 percent for herd immunity, that means we've got a long way to go. And that's got vital practical importance because this means when we start to lift the lockdown measures, there's going to be more interaction between people. We know this virus is there in the community. And because so people are immune, that means it will go on spreading again.
And there's a big chance of a second wave as a result of that, because we don't yet have herd immunity. Me, These numbers are disappointingly small, but it's where we're at at the moment. Let me jump in really quick. I don't have much time left with you, but I wanted to get your thoughts since I have you here on Moderna's pro, uh, process and progress here on a vaccine in the early stages, we're told from reports I've read, but it seems to be promising. What have you heard about Moderna and their vaccine, the ways away? Well, you see, I believe this is part of warp speed, isn't it? This this desire to make a vaccine really quickly. But I think what we have to remember that the warp drive is science fiction. It can take quite a lot more time than we think. So my understanding about the vaccine development of this in the States is that there's not going to be a vaccine ready in 2020. 2021 is probably going to be the very earliest we're going to have mass vaccination. It has to be tested for efficacy to make, efficacy to make sure it works. It has to be tested for safety. There then it has to be scaled up and produced in huge amounts. Then it has to be transported to the nurses and doctors that are going to inject it. So I don't really believe it's going to be here till 2021. There's about 50 or 60 promising vaccination programs going on around the world at the moment. Different people developing vaccines. In my country, in Oxford, there's one that's reasonably well advanced as well. And quite a lot of other countries have got their own vaccine. So I think we have to remember it's not a race. We just need that vaccine. We need it scaled up and we need to get herd immunity unity for the whole world because this virus yeah. and this this pandemic knows no borders. We're gonna, it's going to be interesting to see when those lockdowns, as you mentioned, are lifted. Will herd immunity start developing and, and, and how do we track that? That'll be something else. Before we go, doctor, you're one of YouTube's biggest stars for the latest medical information on COVID-19, health and science lectures that you're putting on. They bring in millions of viewers. Tell me about that and what captures this audience? I don't really know. I've been making nurse education videos actually way back since the 90s. And uh, I've had a YouTube channel for about, I don't know, 10, 12 years now. And there's been people watching and it's been quite well used. But when the uh, coronavirus came up, uh, the numbers greatly increased. I think it's because people realize that this is a clear and present danger to them as individuals and to their families. And I think people on an individual basis also realize that this is something we need to address as a planet. Because as I've said, this virus virus won't stop at borders, it'll just carry on spreading. So I think that's generated a lot of interest in the virus, not because it's particularly interesting in itself, but because that knowledge can really help us to save lives and hopefully save the lives of individuals and, and their families. So I think it's really focused the mind on things like the presence of the disease, the nature of mortality, the nature of individual mortality. And people realize that scientific knowledge is the absolutely essential tool that we need to fight this global pandemic. Well, we appreciate your time sharing it right here on Newsmax. That was Dr. John Campbell, nurse lecturer and founder of Campbell Teaching, who will be on the program every day at this same time. Doctor, thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Pleasure. Thank you. All right, coming.